Well, hello, and welcome to this comparative analysis between two digital piano actions. The PHA50, which is found in this Roland FP90X, and the TP400, which is found in this StudioLogic Numa X Piano GT. Now, this is not a comparison between these two digital pianos. I'm not going to be comparing their internal sounds and their features. This is simply a comparison between these two actions, and you might find it interesting, particularly if you're using either one of these pianos or their respective actions as a MIDI controller to control maybe some virtual piano software that you have. Now there are some objective differences between these actions and I'm going to demonstrate what those differences are. And for fun I'll just throw in some comparisons with a mid-sized Yamaha acoustic grand piano that I play on a regular basis as well. Now there's no substitute for trying these actions out for yourself. But if you're like me and you're, you're fascinated by technical details and analytics, then maybe this comparison will help you if you're considering one of these actions to use in the future. So let's get right into it and we'll start with our first comparison, which is the key dip. Key dip refers to the distance the key travels from its rest position down to the key bed. And on both of these pianos, it's pretty much the same as it is on the acoustic piano. It's 7 sixteenths of an inch. So both the white and black keys travel 7 sixteenths of an inch, and the white keys travel 7 sixteenths of an inch on the TP400, but on the black keys, it's a bit shallower, it's 5 sixteenths of an inch. Now let's talk a little bit about the reset, the distance the key must be raised from the key bed before you can re-trigger another note. And these are triple censored actions, so you don't have to raise the key very far. On the PHA50, it's only 2 sixteenths of an inch for both the white and the black keys. And on the TP400, it's 2 sixteenths of an inch as well for the white keys, but it's a little bit different for the black keys. It's only about 1 sixteenth or less. So you don't have to move the black key very far. You don't have to raise it very far before you can re-trigger a note on this TP400. So both the key dip's a bit shallower and the distance it takes to reset a key on the, uh, the black keys on the TP400 is a bit less as well. So I would say they're very similar in that respect. However, where there is a difference between these pianos is in the ability for them to execute what is referred to as finger sustain. Uh, on an acoustic piano, you can keep a note sustained without using the sustain pedal by simply not raising the key far enough where the damper dampens the strings. And on the acoustic piano, that's about four millimeters. There's a generous distance you have before the damper touches the string, at least on the acoustic piano that I'm currently playing. So it's rather easy to perform finger sustain on the acoustic piano. You could perform finger sustain on the PHA 50 because while it takes two uh, sixteenths of an inch raising from the key bed to re-trigger a note, you could actually go up to three or maybe even three and a half sixteenths before that note is dampened. So it's possible to, to perform finger sustain on the PHA 50, although not as easy as it is on the acoustic piano. But when you get to the TP400, it's not possible at all because once you raise the key two sixteenths of an inch, or in this case, the black keys, maybe one sixteenth of an inch, it cuts off uh, the note. It, it sustains, the, it, excuse me, it dampens the note. So it just isn't possible. So it's possible, uh, it's easy on the acoustic piano. It's possible on the PHA 50, but I wouldn't say it's easy, it's, it's, but it's possible. And it's not possible at all on the TP 400. That's finger sustain. And there might be some repertoire, some songs you have in your repertoire, or maybe a technique that you like to employ where you use that. And just know that you wouldn't be able to do that with the TP 400. Now let's talk about single key repetition speed. I don't notice any discernible difference between these two actions, but what I do notice is that it's easier and faster on the acoustic piano. Now 
Now let me talk a little bit about where the biggest difference is, in my opinion, between these two actions, and that is the key weight. I measured all 88 keys on both actions, both the down weight and the up weight. Now these keyboards, both of them, these actions have simulated escapement. And in my opinion, the escapement on the PHA 50 is really nice. The way that Roland has implemented it, it's very consistent between the white and black keys, and it's almost indiscernible. I mean, you can feel it when you press the key very slowly, but it's, it's really subtle and, and, and nicely done. And the way it's implemented is accurate too. So on the white and black keys, you can push to where slowly to where you would feel that escapement, pause, and then push through it and trigger a note, just like you can on an acoustic piano. So it's very nicely done on the PHA 50. Uh, the TP400, it has the simulated escapement, but in my opinion, it's a little bit more discernible and it's not consistent. It seems to be a little bit more discernible on the black keys than it is on the white keys. And on the white keys, if you push to this escapement notch or resistance and you pause, and then you push through it, you won't trigger a note because the note triggers just barely above that escapement uh, simulation on the white keys. But on the black keys on the TP400, you can push to the escapement, pause, push through it and trigger a note just like you can on the both keys on the PHA50 and on an acoustic action. So again, the escapement, it's, unless you're playing really softly, you don't really notice it, but it just seems to be better implemented in my opinion on the PHA50. And this does impact the key weight, particularly on the black keys, because when I measured the key weight, I didn't measure just to this simulated escapement, like you might on an acoustic piano, measure to the real let off position. But I measured, it was easier for me to measure the weight of the key on both actions, the amount of weight it takes to actually trigger a note. It just was easier and more consistent to do that. So I measured all 88 keys on both pianos, and this is what I came up with. Here we have the PHA 50 on the left and the TP 400 on the right. And you'll notice that there are some green highlights here and on both actions, and that's what I call these outliers. There are a few keys that just were a bit heavier than all the other keys. And I don't know if it's because they don't get played enough, but uh, they seem to congregate more up here in the black keys on the PHA 50, and then there were a few of the white keys in the TP 400. So I didn't include those in the overall measurement uh, because the vast majority of keys don't reflect that. So if you go to the PHA 50 here on the left, the down weight for the white keys was 85, then uh, in the treble region, I mean in the bass region, down to 70 grams in the treble region. And then if you look at the white keys, down weight for the white keys on the TP400, 77 to 67 grams. So again, this is how much weight it takes to trigger a note. And you can see that the uh, down weight on the TP400 is less. Go over to the PHA50, the down weight for the black keys, 85 to 75 grams to trigger a note. Down weight for the black keys on the TP400, 80 to 75 grams. Now, with the caveat that originally when I was measuring the black keys on the TP400, I was coming up with this high measurement up here of 95 to 100 grams across the board to trigger a note. And it's because of this escapement. It's, as I mentioned earlier, the escapement on the black keys on the TP400 is just a bit more discernible than it is on the white keys. And when you're just placing weights on those black keys and letting gravity pull it down, it gets hung up on that escapement notch and it just takes more weight to overcome that. Again, you don't notice this when you're playing normally. So I just didn't feel that that accurately represented what was going on with the TP400. So just for the black keys, I measured to that, as best I could, to that escapement, and I measured 80 to 75 grams, which would make the black keys then really a, a bit more heavier than the white keys on the TP400, where on the PHA50, the, diff, the weight between the black and white keys is, is more consistent. Now, one of the nice things in, about the TP400 on the Studio Logic NUMA is the way that you could adjust the keyboard sensitivity, and they allow you to adjust it 
the ratio of sensitivity between the white and black keys. So that's something that's interesting and can help to accommodate maybe some of this difference if you do notice it, where the PHA-50 doesn't have that. Now, a big difference, in my opinion, again, is in the up weight. If you go over, that's how much weight it takes uh, for the key to be able to lift fully from the key bed back to its rest position. And the up weight on the black keys on the PHA-50 is 58, and then it would drop down to 50 grams in the treble. So 58 to 50, that's how much weight is pushing back on your fingers when you're playing. And if you go to the up weight of the white keys on the TP-400, it's 45 to 35, and that's a lot lighter. And that's more consistent with an acoustic piano. Uh, acoustic pianos, I found, generally are about half the weight of what the down weight is. And so this is a little bit more consistent. And if you go to the up weight on the black keys on the PHA-50, 60 down to 55 grams. And the up weight on the black keys on the TP-400 is 50 to 40, with 45 being the average. So the TP-400 is clearly a lighter action. Now, thankfully, both of these actions can be set up so that they can both reach the full velocity spectrum. Uh, they'll reach 127, and they'll both be able to play very quietly in that sub-16, you know, very low velocity range. And you want that in a MIDI controller. You want to be able to reach the full velocity spectrum, and both key actions will do that. Uh, the way that Studio Logic has implemented their software, the TP-400 gives you a little bit more flexibility in modifying the touch sensitivity. You can do individual key edits, ratios between black and white keys. You don't have that on the PHA-50 and the Roland. But overall, in conclusion, I prefer the TP-400 because I like it a little lighter action and subjectively it feels a little quicker to me as well. And I like that it doesn't have as much weight pushing back on my fingers when I play the piano. So it just feels like a better lighter, quicker action to me. But there's nothing I play, given my skill level, that I can play on this TP-400 that I can't play on the PHA-50. So both of them could serve me well. I just enjoy doing it more on the TP-400. And it feels maybe a little bit easier to do it on the TP-400. And when I transition from this action to the acoustic action, and, uh, and that mid-size Yamaha acoustic grand, it seems a little bit more natural, the feeling of the keys, the feeling of the action. And something I can't measure, but I do prefer the texture on the TP-400, the texture of the keys, both white and black, over the um, PHA-50 on the Roland. So if you're looking for a lighter action, then you probably might gravitate a little bit towards the TP-400. And I wouldn't consider it a light action, and neither would I consider this a heavy action, but they are different, and that difference is, is noticeable. So I prefer the TP-400, and I'm gonna stick with that. I'd be curious to know if you tried them both out what you would like better. So hit up your local uh, store and see if you can check it out for yourself and see what you like. I hope that this video was helpful for you and maybe some of these differences uh, might have been informative enough that you'll be better prepared uh, when you go searching for a key action in a digital piano keyboard that might serve you and your needs. So thank you for watching and God bless.